Hello, hello, John Marquis here, your Builder CPA, and this is part two of our WIP schedule. So in the first video, we went through how to actually calculate the WIP, and for a lot of people, it's just helpful to know this number. But if you want to go so far as posting it in QuickBooks, I'm going to show you how to do that now. So we're gonna head over to our sample QuickBooks file, obviously never using any live client data, and we need to find the chart of accounts. So um, QuickBooks likes to hide this, and they even like to give you a warning not to look at it, but there's a few different ways of um, looking at it. In my humble opinion, everyone should know where their chart of accounts is, and you should look at it frequently because it is a living, breathing chart that will Describe your business. If possible, use the National Association of Home Builders chart of accounts whenever possible. They've got a ton of accounts that you can use. Do I recommend uploading all of them? Absolutely not. Start with only the ones that you need and move on from there. So I'm going to go ahead and bookmark the chart of accounts. Now it is permanently over here on the left. So here we are on the chart of accounts and we are going to create a new account. And I'm gonna look at the NAHB option. So I have the chart of accounts from the NAHB here, and we have two accounts that we should make. So first of all, we have 1265 costs in excess of billing. So I'm just gonna copy this one, and I'm gonna bring it over here. Um, and this QuickBooks file is not using um, numbers, so I'll just exclude the 1265 for now. And this is going to be a current asset. And we can just choose inventory. So these are costs that are in excess of billings. Sometimes I like to add just so that I'm a little more familiar with this, so we can call this under billings. Go ahead and save, and then the other account that we will use will be over billings. So that one is gonna be 2480 billings in excess of costs. So this would be if you have billed your homeowner too much. So I'm going to create the account, but um, it's not really necessary that we use it in this case. And we're gonna choose other current assets and we'll just pick inventory. So that will keep the two accounts next to each other, even though the NAHB actually says that the billings in excess of costs would be a liability. So I'll add my description here over billings. And we've got some options. So we can enter this calculation as a total, which is make, it will make it a lot easier, or we can enter it as individual line items. I prefer to keep things simple. So I'm gonna delete all of these rows and then just do a sum. So one of the accounts that I created, I won't even end up doing. So in this case, the negative actually means that I have underbilled my homeowner and I need to record an asset. So we're gonna go over to our uh, QuickBooks file. We know that the amount has to be 140,000. So we are going to do a new journal entry and we'll do it for the most recent month ended. And we are just going to find our under billings account it's an asset, so it has to be 140,000, and this is going to be record costs in excess of billings. We need to send the client an invoice. And you can put in here, um, I guess in this case it would be plural since we're combining them. We need to send the clients. You can put in a name if you'd like. Um, I don't find that to be necessary. And then this is actually going to increase our costs. I mean, our sales, <laughs> it's going to increase our sales. So 
Um, if you've got any questions about debits and credits, yes, a credit is actually a sale. So that is correct. I'll show you in a second. So we will go ahead and save and close. And then if I go to my profit and loss, and it will automatically run for the most recent month, we'll just choose um, last month. And you can now see in our sales of product income, if we click on this number, so you can see originally this business only had these transactions and now our journal entry is listed on the last line and it's a big $140,000. So I'm not done yet. Um, I need to go back into my journal entry and I actually need to reverse it. So the whip is only valid for a very specific point in time. And on February 1st, who knows if you sent the client an invoice, hopefully you did. So we're just gonna come down here and we're gonna hit the reverse button. And now this is gonna undo what we just did. But if I were to only look at the results for February, without sending an invoice to the client or without posting another whip entry, my numbers for February are gonna look artificially low. So that's why it's so important once you start this process, you really have to continue it over and over and it makes your financials, your profit and loss at least, it makes it a little bit less reliable if you were to look at it during the middle of the month. So I'll show you what happened in the reports. And you can see QuickBooks automatically added an R behind the journal entry number. It automatically chose the following date because it assumes that you're always posting these entries on the last day of the month. And it also put in the memo that this is a reversal. So we're gonna go ahead and save and close. And for our January numbers, it looks still the same. But as soon as I expand this date to include February 1st, you can see that it backed out exactly what we just did. Same thing on the balance sheet. So if you go to the balance sheet and we look at it as of last month, we have our costs in excess of billings, under billings, it's 140,000. That's exactly what it was on the last day of January. And then if we update it to the following day, it will go to zero because we want to undo our whip entry until we are ready to make the whip entry at the end of the next month. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully that ex explains some of the risks in the whip journal entry. It's a, it's a great process if you're willing to keep up with it. If you have any questions, drop a comment. Otherwise, have a great day.